So. Bill, we are standing in front of the radar. What kind of helicopter system is that? And what is the main difference if we compare it, for example, to a Black Hawk? Uh, first off, this Raider is the sports car of helicopters. This thing is a blast to fly, and it is fast. So if you look at the rotor systems, coaxial rotor. Now this is different than some of the other coaxial rotor system helicopters you may have seen in that it's a very rigid rotor. That means that we can have a difference in lift on each of those rotors, and that's what allows us to go fast because we no longer have to be as concerned with retreating blade stall. This S97 has gone 210 knots in level flight, whereas our other X2 aircraft have gone like 250 knots in level flight. And that speed that you go is all based on, on customer requirements and how fast they need to go and how far they want to go. Um, it's a great machine. You can fly it without the pusher prop. Unlike a tail rotor on the back of a helicopter, the prop here is not safety of flight. So if you get combat damage to the pusher prop, um, you can disengage it. The pilot has a switch with a clutch that he can disengage that pop, prop, and we have flown this aircraft to 160 knots uh, without the prop installed. Um, it has all classic helicopter attributes. You can fly fast, left and right sideways and backwards and vertically up and down. Uh, one thing that might be interesting to point out too is that if you look at the nose of the aircraft here and then the tip of the main rotor blade, they're really close. And so as a pilot, normally your tip of your rotor is like 15 feet out in front of you or even further. And now I've got to mentally extrapolate as I'm coming into a very tight confined area. Here, not so much. So you're more comfortable going into tight spaces than you would be in some other helicopters. It's fast. So what kind of missions would it be normally perfect for? Ah, so a lot of times when you need a helicopter, um, it's kind of the 911 mission, right? Like it's either that guy that's out there on the highway that's had the accident and is, and is suffering and, and needs some assistance. So you want somebody to get there quick. Or it's that combat troop that's similarly suffered some sort of tragedy and you want to get to him in a hurry. Or maybe it's those combat troops that are pinned down in some sort of a firefight and they need the assistance of an attack helicopter. So in many respects, it's anything you need a helicopter for, but you want that helicopter to get there a little bit faster. So it can be weaponized. Where can the weapon be fixed? What kind of weapons can it carry and how much? So uh, that's all customer requirements. Like uh, helicopters can put turreted uh, guns on it. You can put missiles on it. You can have them internal that come out via some um, mechanism uh, only when they fire. Um, all that will be customer requirements and there's no limitation on X2 technology. Anything you've seen on uh, other helicopters in terms of weapon systems could be installed on this sort of an aircraft. And you know, these days, a lot of times it's about air launched effects and maybe like being able to launch some drones off of the uh, aircraft so that maybe I don't have to go over that ridge line that I'm really, really worried about the threat on the other side. I can launch a drone and see what's going on over the ridge. It's currently not part of a US program. Uh, where do you see the future for the helicopter? Um, so right now we're continuing to do flight tests on Raider and we are uh, evolving the technology and maturing the technology. We're currently flying a different center of gravity in this aircraft uh, at our flight test facility in South Florida. And um, uh, in the future, we hope to uh, secure a customer that uh, wants a, a modern, fast helicopter. From a pilot to a pilot, if somebody would switch from a Blackhawk or a H145M, for example, what would the most significant experience to step over to the radar? So there's a, there's a couple of things. One, uh, the prop has a clutch switch attached uh, to it. And on some of the aircraft, we put it on the collective where you can engage and disengage the prop via a switch. When the prop is disengaged, it flies exactly like any other helicopter you've ever flown. And uh, except it's a, it's a very clean machine. So even when we had the prop uninstalled here, we flew it to 160 knots and we weren't even anywhere near maximum power uh, at that point. And so uh, when you engage the prop, we use a, a beeper switch on the collective, push forward to go faster, uh, aft to go slower. It's pretty intuitive and pilots take to it quickly. Uh, the other thing, 
the one of the best things that I like about this aircraft is coming into the landing zone. You know, consider that 911 mission where the, it's a medevac aircraft and he's going to a location that he's never been to before on the side of a highway. Well, the last thing you do in a helicopter is raise the nose to land. Here I can come in, put negative pitch on the pusher prop and land, uh, uh, decelerate very quickly and see everything that's in front of me. So I'm less apt to, to uh, run into something I maybe didn't see as I was higher. Uh, so I think that that is a powerful attribute of this. It's not speed, but it is inherent to the uh, pusher prop that has a braking capability. Now, if I didn't do anything and I came into the hover with all of this deceleration on the prop, I would start backing up. And so we even put a button in there that I can just press the button and it takes away all of the thrust from the prop and puts it in a neutral mode so it's relatively easy for the pilot.